name is Jyoti Dev. I will be presenting our work on privacy and respectful discourse in AI chatbots done in collaboration with Dr. Tatiana Ringenberg and Dr. L. Jean Camp, who you met earlier um, at Indiana University, Bloomington. So I want to start by scoping what we mean by chatbots. We are looking at chatbots which people engage with socially, called social chatbots. Examples would be Replica and Cleverbot, which total over 26 million users. We have seen a 35% hike in usage for such bots, especially during the pandemic, since people were more socially isolated and wanted to be able to talk to someone. This can also include bots like Pandora bots, Insta bots, Mitsuko, and sometimes assistants like Alexa and Google Assistant. There is ongoing research around chatbots looking at biases and gender design and how bots can reinforce gender bias. There's also a couple of privacy breaches that have come up in the past few years, most noticeably being the Delta breach, where the assistant bot exposed financial information um, about their customers. The final bucket of re related research area is around manipulation, where social bots can deploy manipulative tactics to encourage violent behavior among users who use them. So we wanted to look at two things. To what extent can privacy become necessary in such bots? Is there information being shared that needs to be protected? And second, how do users manage their information in such interactions, given that there are no standard practice, pri privacy practices in bots? So our focus was on data types and themes leading to information disclosure. We looked if users shared sensitive information about themselves as defined by the general data protection regulations, and if there were conversational themes that indicated disclosure or non-disclosure. We did a thematic analysis of 37 chat logs from a 2019 sample of Cleverbot data. From the numbers that we see on the right, users spoke to Cleverbot more in words and short phrases than complete sentences as they would with another person. Moving on to the data types, we looked at users' responses to sensitive data category requests. We use the GDPR to identify what are these sensitive data categories. Users shared political opinions, affiliations, and choices. They also shared their religious beliefs and practices. They, they spoke about sexual orientation. They spoke about age and gender groups. Um, they also spoke about approximate location. So in this case, users tried to reciprocate Cleverbot's location by sharing information about their own location. The biggest category of data that we did see was health. So users shared information about their health, including if they had depression, anxiety, or major health concerns that happened due to the nature of the conversation. We did not find any data around GDPR categories like racial or ethnic origin, uh, trade union membership, genetic data, and biometric data. The second thing we looked at was data themes that may lead to disclosure. We initially began with a discursive psychology approach and then tested the results by taking a thematic analysis method. Our thematic analysis was a result of identification of words using qualitative coding. Discursive psychology depends on understanding the emotion and intent of talk. However, in the analysis of chatbot interactions, people may be joking or insincere. So these results, while based on thematic analysis, also align with uh, previous results in terms of content. But we cannot assert any findings about actual emotion or rely on accuracy in terms of emotion in the data. So we saw instances of manipulative relationships fostering where users and Cleverbot tried to establish a relationship where they would share information about each other. Users engaged in polarizing discussions and assertions especially when it came to religious and political beliefs, often being argumentative. Sharing by users was majorly driven by comfort, so users shared information about themselves when they were comfortable talking with Cleverbot. We also saw that users tested Cleverbot on the extent of information it collects and whether it was being used for surveillance purposes. For example, in one instance, the user asked Cleverbot if their conversation was being monitored by the FBI. Users and Cleverbots engaged in repetitive phrases to somehow make each other understand what information they were seeking. And finally, users who did not want to share specific identifiable information about themselves simply refused to interact with the, with the chatbot. 
Given that we saw exchange of sensitive if not identifiable information, there is a need to effectively flag and interact with sensitive data and in turn vulnerable users. There are also certain privacy by design principles that we can implement to protect user choice. In order to identify vulnerable users sharing sensitive information about themselves, we need a repository of mental health markers and abuse indicators that would notice such sensitive data types and guide users towards a more appropriate response. So the following slides, um, before I proceed further, I would like to say that, say that the following slides can be triggering. So um, if you would like to take a moment to um, disconnect, you can do that. So I'll wait a couple of seconds. All right. So as you can see, there is a need to identify vulnerable users. In a test conversation that we did with OpenAI, we see that it does exactly that. When a user mentions an instance of domestic violence, they are guided to a national domestic violence hotline where they can seek help, as you can see in the example on the left side. Um, however, in a different example, where the user asks for advice on how to kill themselves, the same platform provides, provides advice on how to do that properly. There is a need for a filter and flag mechanisms that when users indicate that they might be at high risk and are talking to social bots, they are provided with them. A more appropriate response would be that of a Google search, where a high risk input is flagged and the user is presented with a lifeline number where they can seek help. In terms of privacy by design, social bots need to be more transparent about how user input is handled when a user asks for the same instead of providing a confusing response. As you can see on the left, Wobot provides a good response to that. For third party sharing, there should be similar transparency along with a provision to opt out. If a user wants to opt out of sharing information with a third party, in case the bot does that, there should be a way to block the same. So Cleverbot has taken a good first step towards risk management by stating upfront that users should not provide personal information and does not mean what it says. There should be a more efficient approach for such social bots to take more responsibility beyond putting the onus of protection on the user. So to sum it up, Users disclose, we found in our data that users disclose highly sensitive information and this is, some kind, this is a behavior that should be considered while designing chatbots, especially social bots. And indicators of user mental health could be useful in uh, designing some of these interactions. We also found that there is a need to identify and protect sensitive information that might be unexpectedly shared in conversation with such bots, especially health data. And finally, there should be a way to avoid manipulative patterns of interaction so that the uh, conversation between a bot and a human remains at low risk. So looking ahead, we plan to do a systematic analysis of existing chatbots against these recommendations and uh, see what we, what we get. We also want to do an analysis of chatbot interactions compared with studies in manipulation and fraud. So Dr. Tatiana brings expertise in manipulation and Dr. Jean Cam in fraud. So we plan to perform an analysis of chatbot interactions with a focus on fraud and abuse. And we also want to look at differential harms with diverse populations if they vary between cultures. Um, so thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us or reach out to us in Slack. And um, Dr. Camp is here to answer questions as well.